Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu here with Josh Hash, the second. Bet you didn't know there was a first. Did you know? I didn't know actually. Yeah, so <laughs> not nearly as nice as the second. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll you know, have to talk to him someday. Yeah, good luck. I didn't talk to many people. Um, so I'm here with Josh Hash, the second. We're here to talk about um, squatting and how squatting goes wrong. So uh, earlier this week, uh, we had a client come in who uh, was having some hip problems. She's been having hip problems for about two years and uh, she's gone through PT, she's gone through a number of different things trying to get her hip to stop bothering her and she notices it most when she's squatting. So Josh is going to show us how she was squatting so you can kind of get a picture of this. So first that side view and then the front view. Okay and so <clears throat> there's a couple things that might jump out at you if you've been watching some of our other videos, but it'll be helpful for you to um, think about if I kind of point it out as he does it. So Josh, let's give him the side view again. So as Josh goes down into the squat, you're going to notice that his knees have shifted forward quite a bit um, and that his butt stays pretty high. He's trying to get really low, but Josh, how are you attempting to accomplish that? Uh, lowering my tor torso. Yeah, so you can see now he's almost doing like a deadlift motion to try to get his body as low as possible to the ground, right? He's trying to get his head close to the ground, so he's folding forward. Um, a number of issues arise here, and this is really this was really relevant for uh, the lady who came in. So not only would her knees feel a lot of stress, um, but the front of her hip would feel just bad, and she just felt like there was no possible way to go lower. Now, Josh, can you try to go lower using that same technique? How low can you get? All right, so you can get pretty low, but you can see that Josh's spine is now totally compromised, and actually his butt, heels come up his, as well. Yeah, heels coming up. So this is a really tough, uncomfortable way to squat. I'll go ahead and face forward and just kind of show him that one too. More of these. Man. More of these. Don't worry, we have the technology to fix it. So you can see as he folds forward, from the front view, you can actually see like, it's going to be really hard for him to keep his eyes up on the horizon. And you can see how narrow his stance is. His feet are sort of right under, like right at hip width. They're a little narrower than his shoulders. And that's also what uh, this lady was doing. So that can make it a little bit difficult to actually sink your hips down and back into the right position. So Josh, can you show them the right way to squat? Hopefully. Yeah, well. <laughs> My money is on no, so we'll see how. Oh, whoa! Look at that. All right, so, so what kind of changes did you have to make to do this? And if you can talk them through while you're sh facing them, that would probably help. Uh, well, let's see. Probably spreading out the feet a little bit wider would be the first place I'd start. If you're super, super narrow, then your hips aren't really going to be able to uh, go down between your legs, and that's actually kind of more of what the squat is. You're squatting your pelvis down in between your legs. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sit back a little bit more than I was in the beginning, right? In the beginning, my knees were kind of shooting forward and my, my hips were kind of following that. So instead, I'm just going to sit back a little bit more and then down, okay? This allows for my hips, my knees, and my ankles to just function better. It's a lot smoother, and as you can see, I stay a lot more upright as well. Right, right. it's all about being upright. So um, when, one of the things we noticed with this lady was when she was doing the squats, her knees would uh, crack a lot, uh, but when her weight was shifted back more, the knees would actually stop cracking. So you know, by adopting more of the, the movement pattern that Josh just showed you, uh, the knees are used a lot more effectively and with less friction. So it was a lot more comfortable for her knees and a lot more comfortable for her hips. But what we found was that she hadn't yet um, developed the strength to be able to do a full squat like this. So when she tried it, she could only get to about the halfway point, like just above the knees. And like right there, it just felt like she couldn't go any further. And that's really common, right? We've seen that with a lot of um, clients who just haven't developed that strength yet. And in that case, um, you start, you need to, uh, regress a little bit and do things like uh, rear lunges and things like box squats which we've shown videos for um, in the past to try to build up that posterior chain 
um, uh, strength so that you're actually able to go further down. It may feel like it's like a bony restriction or you just can't possibly go further, but actually if you can train your body um, consistently and gradually, you can get there. It just takes a little bit of time to wake up the right muscles. So um, really, I just wanted to share that story today because it, it's it's a pattern we've seen you know, a lot mm -hmm. here. So um, we just wanted to emphasize again that um, it's something to think about with squat form. You don't want to be too narrow generally. Some people may be able to pull this off, but in general you want to be a little bit wider, probably a little bit wider than hips. And then as you go down, you want to make sure you're not shifting your knees way forward, but rather trying to get your butt to sink down and back so that you can maintain proper position. If you start shifting forward, you get all kinds of strain into the knee. Everything starts to feel funny. So if you can keep it a little bit more on that that kind of track, you're going to feel like you just have a lot more hip mobility and um, resiliency for that up and down motion. A lot of times this is shown in really funny ways in group exercise classes, right, and in home exercise videos. So we want to make sure uh, you see it done this way so that you can do it right and avoid hurting yourself. So anything to add, Josh? I think the only thing to add would be sometimes in, in a group exercise or, or a, maybe a video that you're doing at home, the emphasis is more on like getting the reps done and the speed of the reps. Yeah. But if the, if the squats are hurting your body in any way, hip, knee, whatever, back, um, then that, that's, that's not right. So you have to take a step back and figure out what's going on and probably try to do those reps maybe at a slower pace. Um, find out what's most comfortable for you, right? Because the quality of the reps is more important than the quantity. For sure, for sure. So you got to move well before you move a lot. So move well first and move a lot. All right, so hope that helps you guys out and hope that blah, 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 blah. Blah blah. Blah blah. Go. <laughs> blah blah. I hope that helps you out, and I hope you remember that pain sucks. Why shouldn't it?